An Englishman, an Irishman and a blonde Welsh bird walk into a monastery might sound like the opening of a rather rude joke, but it is in fact what caught my eye when checking out this UK PAL release of a Japanese RPG I had never heard of. But as someone who likes surprises, I took a chance on it. But did my gamble pay off, or were my finely tuned gaming instincts which I'd honed from 8-bit micros to 16-bit consoles, thrown off by the promise of some polygon panty flashing. Let's find out. Hey there folks, my name's Grey, this is Consultronics. Now, I won't be surprised if you've never heard of Kudelka, but I will be slightly surprised if you haven't heard of its PS2 follow-up series, Shadow Hearts which for a couple of brief but glorious years was one of the few Japanese role-playing games the West seemed to lap up before Persona moved on to its patch and gave it the Spanish Archer. Developed by Saknoff, a small Japanese studio set up by SNK and staffed with a number of ex-16-bit RPG programming veterans from Square, now looking for more creative pastures chiefly among them being Hiroki Kikuta, for who this project was something of a labour of love, with him writing, directing and even scoring the soundtrack for the game, having previously provided music for titles like Secret of Mana and its sequel on the SNES. But while I always applaud auteur projects, you get the impression when playing it that he was perhaps spinning too many plates as he tried to bring all his ideas to bear, because there are a number of little niggles that have plagued Kudelka's legacy in RPG fandom over the years, but I'll get to those. First I think I should tell you just what this game is, because it's one of those rare breed of mashed together genre RPGs that look to elevate themselves from the tropes of western fantasy and present a more grounded gameplay and experience. Yes, of course, there are ghosts and monsters running about that need vanquishing, but it gets away with that by firmly planting itself into the survival horror camp. Although on the box, it describes itself as the sexiest gothic horror RPG on PlayStation. And they got the gothic horror part down, I'll give them that, but if you're looking for sexiness, then stroll on. Unless, of course, I was the only one who just happened to miss the secret sex dungeon in the basement. But while the influences of Resident Evil are there for all to see, from 3D models running around digitised rooms and labyrinths with a fixed camera perspective, it is at heart an RPG. A somewhat traditional one at that, with its tactical grid flavoured style of turn based combat with little tactics involved particularly when you can equip your merry band of adventurers with guns. And when you get the shotgun, I don't care how many phallic-like staffs of ancient arcane buggery you throw my way, when one well-placed shotgun blast to a monster's face will end the fight before he can say, All right, boyo. Can I just be clear then? I love Kudelka and always have. I didn't even know the first Shadow Hearts was a sequel until I bumped into her towards the end of the game, which was pretty cool. But I think I'd better put my liking of this game into some sort of context, because my first time playing I imagine was like a lot of people's, as I lasted only about two or three hours before I simply had to quit. Which wasn't down to the storytelling, which is actually pretty good and well researched, as there are references to obscure British characters and events such as Roger Bacon and the real life sinking of the Princess Alice in the River Thames which claimed almost a thousand lives. Nor was it the suspiciously American sounding accents of your party, who at least only speak during the infrequent cutscenes. No, the big handicap to this game is random battles, or to give them their technical term, the fucking random battles, which are an absolute nightmare in the beginning, and while levelling up makes them somewhat tolerable, it's like playing an 8-bit RPG at times, the way you think you've made it to a door or got out of anywhere unmolested, only to be blindsided by another random body horror spooky and his biggest mates. Even just closing the menu can put you straight into another battle, so it certainly helps to have some experience in the trenches of RPGs before playing this. 
The positive to it though would definitely be the monster designs. Same for the bosses. Clearly a lot of thought went into the enemies you'll encounter, and they're certainly more memorable than the usual variety. And if I'm honest, that was part of the reason why I kept coming back to this game. Its setting of a desolate and abandoned monastery on the Welsh coast and horror overtones made it a welcome change of pace for the genre. Overall, if you like RPGs, I wholeheartedly recommend Kudelka on the PS1 as a brief 10 plus hour gothic adventure. And while its positives outweigh its negatives, most of the negatives are gathered at the beginning, so bear that in mind. So, my name's Grey, you've been watching Consultronics, lots more videos coming your way very soon, so let me just say thank you very much for watching, and goodbye.